Previously on The Bill. It's a guilty! I'm a police officer! What's going on? It's my Darlow, Customs and Excise. If I'm right, and Darlow has got some kind of little fiddle going on. It's the cocaine from the hall. Give me the keys. Give me the keys, you black bitch! Oh. Three walking Avenue, 13 Siskin Road, all of them. Nothing. I just love getting up at the crack of dawn for a wild goose chase. Listen, once you uniform are on the job, we'll get through that list in after time. Frank Mann can't stay hidden forever. Didn't you see my indicator? I was just about to park here. No, I didn't see you, love. Well, you can see me now. Yeah, and we're parked here now. So that's a police station. I'm on official police business. Don't mind. <laughs> that was a bit harsh. Listen, it's not my fault of an uptight school run. Mum can't park her car. What's Clive Darlow doing here? He's obviously not giving himself up because he won't be leaving the station, would he? Detectives. Mr. Darlow. Just picking up some evidence that your office has kindly booked in for us. Always glad to help our friends from Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. Well, it's the least you could do after gate crashing our raid yesterday. Well, only police officers, what do you expect? Oh, don't be so hard on yourselves. Just think how bad the traffic would be in this town, eh? If it weren't for all your hard work. Ta da. <laughs> Can't wait to wipe that fat smile off his face. Well, let's just hope the new super lets us carry on investigating this, because you know what? Now I do not want to drop it. No, in our lot, the super wants to hand any suspicions of corruption to the DPS. And there are two things I can't bear. Blaggers and bank collars. June? June? Are you OK? Are you sure you should be here? I beg your pardon? I'm sure Inspector Gold wouldn't mind if you took more time off. What makes you think I need more time off? I'm perfectly capable of deciding when I come back to work, thank you very much. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that you weren't. It's just that it's only been a few days since... Since I was raped. Look, if you need more time, no one's going to think any worse of you. It's understandable. Anyone in your position would be finding it... Look. ...difficult. You should be pleased that I'm coping. I really don't need wrapping in cotton wool. Now, if you're feeling guilty about what happened, well... Frankly, that's your problem, not mine. I suggest you deal with it. I am. Oh, just the man I want to see. Has a new superintendent arrived yet? Uh, well, if she has, I haven't seen her. But um, I just wanted to remind you that I'm booked off early today. It's the uh, it's the dentist. He said that um, it's really important that I get my tooth done because it's um, it's a it's a root canal. Right. Well, I just have to do without you then, will not I? Yeah. Well, June, you're right. You're back. Where else would I be, Smithy? All right, you let me know as soon as the superintendent arrives, all right? Yeah. I mean, I'm not ill, I'm not an invalid, and I'd rather be working than thinking about what happened. I'm beginning to understand how you must have felt dealing with your cancer. Everybody tiptoeing around you, not knowing what to say. This is a bit different, June. I've seen the rape counsellor, I've read all the leaflets, I've done everything I'm supposed to do. All I want to do is get back to work. OK. If you do need to talk, I'm here. Nothing to say, Mum. Honestly. So what do you know about this new super? Any decent gossip? I heard the coppers at her last night called her prosser. Come in. Hello. I'm Superintendent Prosser, and you are? DC Masters, Mum. Yes, Hunter. You're about the car. I imagine you're squirming with embarrassment right now. So, what can I do for you? Yesterday we dropped in on a customs search, Mum. So I heard. Makes interesting reading. We think Clive Darlow, senior customs investigator, is bent. That he has Frank Mann on his payroll, not in the strictly legal sense. That is quite an allegation, yeah. Well, Frank Mann uh, was an old snout of mine. I saw him at the uh, warehouse before he got raided by customs and, um, I mean, Darlow, to be more specific. Darlow visited Frank Mann in Shadwell Prison twice. The last time was a week before he was released. And? And, frankly, we think they've got a scam going. 
Darlo confiscates the drugs on a custom search, skims a bit off the top, and leaves them somewhere convenient for Frank Mann to find. Except we stumbled in before they had a chance to make the drop, and so they had to change their plans. A uh, uniform lost Frank a uh, P.O. box yesterday. We think that was the uh, second drop-off point. It's an interesting theory. But that's all it is at the moment. I mean, where's your proof? Well, that's just it, Mum. Unless we can find Frank Mann, we don't have any. Now, we've got a list of possible addresses from Crimint, and we'd like to check them out. Technically, this is Directorate of Professional Standards territory. Corruption is a messy business. But... If you promise to keep me up to speed on this one, I'll let you run with it. Thank you, Mum. Yeah, thank you, Mum. Great. Mum? Mum, you're up early. Am I interrupted? No, 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 we've just finished. Let me know if you find anything. Mum? Sure. Sure. Um, you haven't been, um, welcomed properly. Hmm? I wanted to be here when you arrived, you know, show you around the station, uh, let you get your bearings. What are you waiting for? Uh, Smith, you said you need some uniform help. Yeah, Frank Mann again. Can you check an address on the Frontier State? Frank's mother lived there in the late 90s. Well, he's not going to go back there, is he? Probably not, but we can't risk missing him. We've got to follow up every lead. And if you find him, try not to lose him this time. And we get Frank's sister's address, 98 Atley House. Yeah, fine. I've got to pick something on the way. That took me about five minutes. So you lost Frank Man yesterday. There's no need to beat yourself up about it. But I'm assuming that's what's causing the long face. Everyone's lost a suspect one time or another. Oh, it's not that. Then what? It's not that woman, is it? I thought you dumped her. She's not the problem. When I slept with her, I sort of stepped on someone else's toes. So now that someone else has found out. Not yet, but it's only a matter of time. He's, he's kind of a mate, and I don't want this to mess up things between us. Well, then bite the bullet, tell him yourself. If he's a real mate, he's not going to fall out with you over some bird. It's all about damage limitation, Stevie. If there's a risk he's going to find out anyway, it's better that he hears your version first. According to the neighbour, Frank Mann's sister died just over a year ago and the flat went back to the council. She hasn't seen Frank since he went inside. Got your coffee now. Thanks. Did you get what you needed? Divorce petition. Oh, right. How did Cindy take that? I don't know about her yet. I haven't seen her in almost a year. She's probably met somebody else starting a new life. That's exactly what I'm doing. But you're still your wife, Phil. Do you really think it's that simple? Yeah. She left me, remember? Yeah. Doesn't mean she won't be bothered. Does she know you've got another woman pregnant? No, not yet. Dear Sensor from 759. Go ahead, Steve. No luck, Karen. Frank's mum hasn't lived there for years. No sign of him. Great. Another dead end. So what happened to you and Vaughn last night? Disappeared a bit sharp? Yeah, we had a bit of trouble outside the pub with that bloke last night. Vaughn tried to take his keys off him to stop him driving. He got a bit low and she lashed out. No kidding. No, I wish I was. What with the Lee Thomas child coming up? Couldn't have come at a worse time. Such a shame. She's a good copper. Who's a good copper? Yvonne. I can't believe she's on a manslaughter charge. We put our lives on the line every day. No one bats an eyelid. An officer defends herself. She ends up in court. Well, to be fair, the man did die. So? What are you supposed to do? Just sit there while some nutter attacks you? Come on, don't forget what they did to Tony. How long were you in hospital? Not too long, I hope. Um, Superintendent Prosser, I'd like to introduce you to some of Sunhill's finest. PCs Hollis, Harmon, <laughs> Stamp and Casper. Look, I know I'm not supposed to say this, but I couldn't agree more. I mean, the last thing an officer should be thinking when they pull a ASP or a CS spray is, am I going to end up in court? But, unfortunately, that is the reality we all face these days. Let oh, me know it. Listen to me. I sound like a Fed rep at a Christmas party. I'll let you get back to your coffee. Oh, she's not underestimating the role of the family. You know, when I held that position, I thought it was an intrinsic part of the smooth running of the service. Thank you very much. 
so important for senior staff to support their officers, don't they? I mean, so often we can come across as distant and aloof. Superintendent O'Cara has always been very supportive of all of us here. Well, I'm not suggesting otherwise. I know that Superintendent Akara is a very capable and respected officer. All I'm saying is that some PCs might think that we forget what's at stake for them when we spend so much time sitting behind a desk. Let me just say, I'm not here to step on anyone's toes, Gina. I never thought you were, Mom. Good. Because I'm here to adapt to Sun Hill, not the other way around. Okay. on the corner of Oxford Lane and Backhouse Street. Over. Sergeant. Mark the word. Why didn't you tell me that Superintendent Prosser had arrived? I ended up looking a right prat. Now she thinks that we're all incompetent and we can't even communicate. Thank you very much, Smithy. At first, we thought they were handcuff marks, but they're on the ankles as well. She has abrasions on the inner thighs and buttocks. So she was assaulted? Possibly. They found traces of GHB as well as alcohol in her blood. It's a date rape drug. Well, no wonder she's unconscious. She mixed that with booze or drugs. At the very least, you're going to wake up with a loss of memory. We just thought we'd get advice from a senior officer. What with the abrasions and it being possible rape? It's okay, Leela. I'm back at work. To work. Sarge, um, she still had a bag on her when we found her, so we've checked her belongings. Driving license, phone, purse, and a flyer from Wired from last night. Well, that's the club on Carby Street, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit of a dive, but um, cheap drinks. Yeah, the trouble is we're not going to know what really happened until she regains consciousness. If she regains consciousness. But I think this club is as good a place as any to start, so Amber, you stay here. You let us know if her condition changes. Oh, but Sarge, Yes, Sarge. And Leela, you come with me. Morning, Cindy. What are you doing here? Can I come in? You look great. So do you. But I doubt you've come here to talk about how well preserved we are. What do you want, Phil? To explain. Explain what? I'm getting married. Congratulations. When did all this happen? It was recently. Does this woman have a name? I'm assuming it is a woman. Kate. Her name's Kate. Petition for divorce? Yeah, well, you've got to be divorced to get married, haven't you? <laughs> Go out the duff, did you? You did? I don't believe it. Am I the only woman in Sun Hill you can't get pregnant? Look, I didn't mean for it to happen. What are you? Seventeen? So what's she like then, is Kate? Nice. And she's nice. Nice? Is that the best you can do? So where'd you meet her then? At a group counselling. Oh, so you finally worked out your bonkers? It was for sex addiction. It's a proper illness. 
you got a sex addict pregnant. Now that is funny even for you, Phil. Yeah, you're right, it's ridiculous. I'm ridiculous. Well, it may not be the ideal situation, but I'm trying to do the right thing. Now, I want that baby to grow up knowing I'm its father. All right, and all I'm asking you to do is sign one bit of paper. So you take a look at it and let me know what your decision is. Yes, Hunter. Phil. Joe, what's going on? I checked Crimmins again after you left. You remember Shirley, Frank Mann's girlfriend? I'm outside her brother's house. Guess who's guest of honour? Looks like Frank's been very busy. Well, I'm on my way. Well, hurry, because there's all manner of traffic going in and out there. We had enough people in here last night. So, could she have been one of them? I just run the club. I don't want any trouble. Look, she may have been attacked. Somebody may have put something in her drink. No one who works here put anything in anyone's drink they didn't want. Look, Mr Finley, I'm not saying. Mosey. Mosey, we're not accusing you or your staff of anything. We just need your help. Yep, she was here last night. The guy she was with was a safe text winner. Uh, what? We get everyone to write down their name and their mobile number on the back of a raffle ticket. Mm -hmm. Every half hour, we pick a couple of numbers. They come to the bar with their ticket or their mobile. Free drink. Keeps everyone happy, keeps everyone here. Clever. So, the guy that Kelly was with was a winner? Yeah, he won a bottle of champagne. So you might have his mobile phone number? You know, I thought something was weird. I mean, she was well out of it when they left. I mean, she could hardly walk. I mean, that's why I remember her. I mean, the champagne we give out, it ain't strong, trust me. All right. Blue for boys, pink for girls. Girls' night, was it? Well, what can I say? My club, my rules. I like women to win. I don't suppose you get them to put their address on the back, do you? And would you write down your address for a free drink? Anyway. You ladies, you want to come to a uh, safe text night? You um, just ask for Mosey. You know, black and blue unite. Yeah, right. Well, we'll just go and check these numbers out. Thank you very much. Right, 07831402699, registered to Mr. Mal Jackson, 25 Gatley Crescent. Oh, nice place. Not all criminals live on council estates. Uh, Mr. Jackson? Yeah? I'm Sergeant Ackland from Sun Hill. Uh, I wonder if we could have a word. It's a bit inconvenient. What's it about? Well, it'd take a minute if we could come inside. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we need to uh, ask you a few questions. Would you mind telling me where you were last night? Did you go out? Um, yeah. Where to, Mr. Jackson? Uh, what, what are you doing? Don't mind if I use a loody. You were about to tell me about last night. Where were you? Well, it was just some club. Um, I can't remember the name. Well, let me refresh your memory. Wired? That was the one. There you are, you see. Wasn't that difficult. I understand you got lucky last night. Uh, what do you mean? Well, the safe text competition at the club. You won, didn't you? Oh, yeah, that's right. It was a bottle of champagne. Mr Jackson, can you explain this? Glad you could join me. But don't start. Cindy took it well, didn't she? See, there's been at least three other local dealers and a handful of runners in and out of there in the last half an hour. And Frank? 
Still inside. So it looks like we're right. Frankie Boy is a regular drugs cash and carry. Big time dealers bring it into the country. Clive Darlow and his custom mates bust them. He's a hero. Clap, clap. Then when his colleagues aren't looking, some of the drugs go missing. Darlow slips it to Frank Mann, who sells it on for a tidy profit. Frank, we must have really messed up his plan yesterday. Yeah. Let's go and mess it up a little bit more, shall we? You're a hard man to track down, Frank. Although anybody would think you advertise, considering the amount of people that have come in and out of here today. Bill? In here. Wow, Frank. You have been busy. And? Do you accept that this item found on your premises is GHB? Yes, I do. Where'd you get it from? Uh, I went to that club wired last night and um, I got it there. You go there often, do you? Uh, no. First time. Well, that was a bit of luck. You go out to score, you go to a club you've never been to before and you just happen to stumble across a dealer. Yeah, it wasn't like that. So I didn't go out to buy drugs. Uh, I got talking to this girl and she asked me to um, get them for her. All right, who was this girl? Uh, she was called uh, Kelly. Bought her a drink. She looked lonely. And what about the GHB? Who did you buy it from? Some bloke in the club. Kelly pointed him out. Look, I know I shouldn't have pandered to her. You know, I didn't want the evening to end, so... Can you give us a description of this man? Black fella. Pretty friendly for a dealer. That's not a description. Look, I was tipsy, and I'm not good with faces at the best of times. He recommended cocaine and, um, GHB. He said it was good for sex. And what happened then? Well, uh, then we went back to my place, uh, we had a few more drinks, and then we took the drugs. I mean, I was a bit nervous at first, you know, <laughs> never done anything like that before. But Kelly had. Oh, she seemed to know what she was doing. And what happened after you took the drugs? Well, we had sex. The doctor said that Kelly had what he called rope burns on her wrists and her ankles. I know. I Things got a little out of hand. See, she asked me to... Look, I'm an insurance salesman. I've never... Let's just say that she had a very healthy imagination. Did she agree to sex? Of course. Or was she telling you? That I forced myself on her? Did you? No. Can't get a woman the old-fashioned way. Typical. A woman changes her mind about sleeping with someone and then she cries rape. I didn't rape her. She wanted it. Oh, like we all do, I suppose. OK, let's take a break. Interview terminated at 12.02pm. What's her problem? I wonder where you disappeared to. I've had Mal Jackson's solicitor screaming blue murder. This is not the best job for you to come back to. I've lost my temper before, Mum. I just don't happen to believe he's telling us the truth. Until Kelly comes out of her coma, we won't even know if a crime has been committed. From what Leela tells me, Mal Jackson's story sounds feasible. Oh, anything's feasible. I just don't believe it. You told me you could handle being back at work. And I can. And I believe that you can. But you have to stay focused and keep your feelings out of this. Sarge, Kelly Bradman has regained consciousness. If it's all right with you, Mum, I'd like to get back to work. Of course. I've never met him before. Um, he, he started talking to me and started buying me drinks. Long Island iced teas. Mr Jackson claims that you asked him to buy drugs for you. What? No. 
I've never taken drugs in my life. Not even a spliff, nothing. Did you ask anyone else in the club to get you any? No. I told you, I, I don't take drugs. That bloke, Mal, he bought me a couple of drinks and, uh, and I remember needing some air and, and feeling seriously dizzy. And that's it. That's all I remember. And today, anything? No. Oh, no. Just remember waking up here. OK, Kelly. Thank you. You've done really well. Look. What's happened to me? The nurses, they haven't really told me anything. Mel Jackson, the man who bought you drinks last night, he says that he had sex with you. What? He says that you both took drugs and then you had sex, consensual <laughs> sex. And I'm afraid the doctors have confirmed that sexual intercourse did take place. <laughs> no, no way. He just bought me a few drinks. I don't even know him. I don't know him. I don't know. He's cold. I don't even know him. It's all right, it's all right. <laughs> So is this going to take long? Because I've got places to go, people to see, you know. The amount of coke we found in your possession, you ain't going nowhere for a very long time. That stuff's not mine. I'm just staying at a friend's house. It's, it's got nothing to do with me. What? You were practically swimming in it. All right, what about all the visitors this morning? Suppose they just think you're a popular bloke, yeah? You know what it's like. I've been away a while. Lots of people to catch up with. <sighs> Come on, Frank. You don't want to go down for this one on your own. Especially when we know you're not the one making the real money. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, your mobile phone records tell us something different. There's over 60 calls to this number. And guess whose number that is? Clive Darlow. That name ring any bells? Possession with intent to supply. You've only just got out, mate. You're looking at another long stretch. What? 14 years? That's quite a sentence. Especially with someone outside missing you. Shirley gonna wait for you, is she? See, I don't know any woman that would wait that long. I'm just a... a worker. It's, it's Darlow's operation. Well, if my dentist looked as good as you, I'd never miss a checkup. <laughs> Come here. So I hear you arrested Frank Mann? Yeah, he's agreed to cooperate. Apparently, Frank is supposed to be delivering the takings from his cocaine deals to Darlow this afternoon. So we thought... Let them meet and catch Darlow red-handed. In a nutshell. Are you sure that Frank's not going to warn Darlow off? Well, he's facing some pretty serious time. I think he realises the benefits of making this happen. So what do you need? Uniform backup and surveillance equipment, Mum. Fine. Are we going to involve customs on this? Nope. They'll find out soon enough. So let's get one in for the match, shall we? Busy Valentine, busy hunter. I need the pair of you to get down to the Delancey Hotel where DC and the dude is trying to catch a thief and needs more bodies. All right, Mum. Roger, will you just give me a minute, mate? Cindy, what are you doing here? I was looking for Phil. I wanted to give him these. There is divorce papers. He wanted me to sign them. I was a bit angry this morning. It was all quite a shock. To tell you the truth, I was impressed he came to tell me himself. Seems like he might really be turning his life around. Do you know the woman he's marrying? Yeah, I do, yeah. What's she like? I could only get that she was nice out of Phil. Yeah, she is. He told 
told me that he met her at therapy for sex addiction. He's making a lot of sacrifices for her. I don't want to find out that she's running around with half the blokes in Canley. She's not like that. Oh, so she's the angelic butter wouldn't melt in the mouth kind of sex addict, is she? She might not be perfect, but neither is Phil. I know she's going to change. So she hasn't changed yet? Yes, she has. She's made a real effort. And she's going to make a wonderful mum. Phil's really lucky. Sounds like you've got a soft spot for yourself. Look, I'll make sure he gets these. You have, haven't you? You fancy your brother's fiance? Well, don't tell her that. She's a sex addict. She won't be able to keep her hands off you. Hmm? Oh, no. Tell me you haven't slept with her. This just gets better and better. Don't tell Phil, whatever you do. Promise me, Cindy. Promise. Steve. I thought I told you two to go and assist DC in the deer, or am I imagining things? Sorry, Mum, we're just on our way. Or do you think just hanging about in the front office is going to really impress the new superintendent? Now get out of here! So that's her then, the one you slept with? No, she feels suited to be ex-wife Cindy. What's the new model like? She must be quite tasty if she's an improvement on that one. Don't talk about them either. What's the matter? Touch the nerve? Don't tell me you fancy one of them. Well, which one? The wife or the fiancé? <laughs> the fiancé is not the one you slept with, is she? Stupid, I know. Steve, stupid. She's marrying your brother. She's pregnant with his child. I know, I know. You've still got both your legs, so I'm guessing you haven't told him yet. You've got to. I know, and I want to. But how do I admit to my brother? Quickly! You admit to your brother very quickly, because if he finds out from anyone else, well... Trust me, you don't want that to happen. You're right. I'll tell him. I'll tell him off the hotel job. June, how do you go with Kelly Brightman? Well, I've just had to tell her that she's been drugged and raped by a man she hardly knows. She's as well as can be expected. And what about you? It kind of been easy for you. I don't think it would have been easy for anyone. But at least we've got our man. And with the GHB and the rope burns, I shouldn't think any jury's going to look too fondly on Mr Jackson. No, but it looks like we've got another assault that's connected to Wired. And Mal Jackson couldn't have done it. OK, me and DC Perkins will take it from here. What, what, what are you saying? That my personal experience is going to cloud my judgment? No, no, no. You've handled a difficult case really brilliantly. And there's no need for you to put yourself through that again, all right? Reg, I need to speak to Inspector Gold. Is she around? Well, technically she's around, yes, but the new superintendent starts today. She's a bit tied up with her, you know. Sorry, Reg, this is important. Can you tell Inspector Gold that I'm here and I need to speak to her? Yvonne, what are you doing? Why do you need to speak to the inspector? It's a bloke last night. I've got to get my version of what happened in. I'm going to tell Inspector Gold that I assaulted him. You had not him, I would have done. Yeah, but you're not up on a manslaughter charge. Look, better that I tell her what actually happened rather than letting him do it for me. No, look, come on, that's You're just not thinking straight. That guy was so drunk, he probably doesn't remember anything about last night. If he comes forward, my career's finished. Well, he didn't come forward last night. I doubt he's going to come forward now. What's going on? Yvonne's about to throw her whole career away. I hit that man. You mean the one from last night? Sounded like he deserved it. Oh, look, Yvonne, please, don't do this. Don't be so stupid. Look, but at least if I own up to it now, it might count in my favour. And anyway, it's probably been captured on the pub CCTV. No, no, those cameras at the pub, they haven't worked for months. Look, Yvonne, I'll do a deal with you. You go home, get some rest. We'll meet up with you later and we'll talk about this properly. And after that, if you still want to turn yourself in, then I'll come with you, OK? Well, there you go. O off you go, then. Go on. She's right about the CCTV tapes, though. If the prosecution get hold of that, she's done for. But you said the cameras weren't working. She was about to commit career suicides. First thing that came hit me head. Anyway, all this means is we've got to get hold of the CCTV tapes. Then if that drunk does come forward, it's his word against three commas. Think the landlord swallowed it? Why wouldn't he? His CCTV probably needed checking. Just another example of my genius. We got lucky. Well, lucky the pub landlords are environmentally aware. I mean, recording over your TV tapes that quickly, but it's recycling its best. Let's just hope we've done enough. Well, at the very least, it means Yvonne can stop worrying about what happened last night. This camera covers reception, is that right? Mm-hmm. OK. What's going on? Piece of Casper. 
There's been a load of stuff going missing from the rooms over the last couple of weeks. Now, hotel security have managed to corner the suspect, but he's loose somewhere in the hotel. Cool. I'm glad you think so, because your job is to go and knock on every door and make sure that he isn't hiding under a bed or behind a shower curtain. What did you think CID was all glamour and girls? Chop, chop. Sierra Oscar, where's the rest of my uniform support? You know what? If I could spend the rest of my life in this hotel room with you, I would. Living off the minibar and the complimentary continental breakfasts. <laughs> oh, you're such a romantic. I do my best. Yeah. You know what? I should take the afternoon off work more often. I bet you do this kind of thing all the time. No, oh, every day of the week. It's a different hotel, a different bird. But none of them mean as much to me as you do. Oh. Dale? Any idea why there are police cars outside? Mr. and Mrs. Smith is PC Casper from Sun Hill. Um, it's Dan. You know him? Well, of course I know him. I can't be seen here. Oh, what? And I came. You haven't got a husband. Just a minute, we're not decent. Why did you say that? Because Navin knows that there's somebody in here. Smithy? I thought you were a dentist. Yeah, well, I'm here with a friend. Oh. Well, a woman? Well, yeah, of course it's a woman. Oh. oh. Very nice. So who is she? None of your business. What are you doing here? Oh, there's been a series of break-ins in the rooms here. Security guards had a guy cornered, but he gave him a slip. He's still on the premises. I see one male, about five foot eight. Yeah, well, he ain't hiding in here, is he? No, oh, of course not. <laughs> Sorry. So who else is here? Well, it's Roger, Steve, Zane. Right. OK. Do me a flavour. Keep this to yourself. Oh, me. My lips. Anyway, look, I owe you one for keeping quiet about the shell thing. Well, I hardly think this is the same as you and your affair with the borough commander's wife. Oh, married, married. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Secret safe for me. Yeah. Oh, by the way, nice legs. Fur days, not you. What's going on? Oh, it's just some idiot hiding in a hotel somewhere, isn't it? Brilliant. How am I supposed to get out of here with all your son Hill mates swarming all over the place? They're not swarming. I'm serious. My husband knows a lot of coppers. It only takes one of them to see us together and tell him. Yeah, well, Dan's not going to say anything. He's going to keep his gob shut because he owes me one. Do they all owe you one? Because I don't think you quite get it. If we're seen, we can't do this anymore. We're finished. Then I don't want you to worry about it. I'll get you out of it. We'll be able to hear you and see you at all times. Our PC Stamp, Hollis and Harmon will be across the street and we'll be here. Yeah, yeah. I know the deal. It's almost 1.30. He said 1.45 and he always liked to make me wait. Well, it's that for your sake he doesn't make you wait too long. You ready, Frank? And no funny stuff. I think he'll turn up. Did you see the amount of money in that bag? He'll turn up. Roger, any sign of him? Nothing so far. Okay, I'm gonna go check out the kitchen. Steve, I want you at the front entrance down on the back stairs. Um, Roger, you just stay where you are. Will do. Louise Lost? But what... Smithy, what are you doing here? Smithy, what the hell are you... 
claim. Louise Larson? You do know who her husband is, right? Yeah, of course I do. Look, I just need a bit of your help. Am I invisible or something? You're going to need more than my help, mate. Look, I need to get out of here unseen. Do you understand? Louise is worried. Her husband knows a lot of coppers and she's concerned that this is going to get back to him. I'm not surprised. Pete Larson's got more informants than Special Branch. Look, I've got Roger in the security room. Steve's at the front entrance. I've got a load of cops in the back stairs. Man, you owe me one. All right. Roger, I need you and the head of security to head up to the second floor. But who's going to cover the monitors? Look, just do it, all right? Someone down here said they saw him going into the gym. OK, we're on our way. Excuse me. It's your funeral, probably literally. We've got him. Grabbing him, trying to climb out a fire escape. OK, good work. I'll meet you back by the car. Ten past two, Phil. He said Darlow always makes him wait. Yeah, maybe we spooked him though. Just relax, he'll be here. Got movement. It's him. Right, suspect's here. Nobody move until I say. That's it, got it. Go, go, go. Police? It's all police. Put the bag on the floor. Stand up! Come on. You spread your lips. Sir? Clive Darlow, I'm arresting you for conspiracy. Ah, uh, whatever. You've done it. We know it. You're nicked. So, Darlow, anything to declare? Mr. Darlow, I'm arresting you for conspiracy to supply cocaine. I was going to say that line. Hey? I've been thinking all day about using that line. Yeah, you didn't, did you? This is a farce. You've got nothing. Oh, we got plenty. Now, Frank's phone records make for a pretty interesting reading. Frank Mann is my snout. Of course, he calls me. Well, that's funny, because when I asked you yesterday, you hadn't even heard of him. <laughs> the key to keeping a good snout is keeping them confidential. You think I'm going to tell you just because you asked me? Give it a rest. So you want us to wait for the chemical analysis to show that the coke we found at Frank's house matches the stuff from your custom searches? Or are you going to save us all a little bit of time? Circumstantial. I'm not saying that Frank's not a crook. That you can deny it as much as you like. But we've got enough evidence to put you away and you know it. So save it for your customs mates, because they're going to want to interview you next. And I'm sure they'll just love hearing about how you kept their good name clean. Cindy, you all right? Okay, look, give me a little time and I'll come over. Okay, all right, I'll be over in a minute. Good news. Hello. Oh, they don't look very happy, do they? No. Our friends from Customs would like a word with Clive Darlow. Is he in there? Yes, ma'am. Gentlemen. Thank you. It's all yours. Thank you. Well done, both of you. Couldn't have asked for a better first day. You don't know how encouraging it is for me to know I've got officers like you working for me. Thank you, Mum. It was good work. It was really good work. I came to see you in Sun Hill earlier. You were out. I spoke to Steve, though. You didn't say anything? All signed and ready to go. I just need you to answer me one thing. Do you love this, Kate? We're having a baby together. That's not what I asked you. Ah, oh, Cindy. Look. You know my dad's a loser. All right, if he weren't beating my mum, he wasn't there at all. And I always swore that I'd never be like him. But now my daughter's halfway around the world. I've messed up things with you, and I've pretty much messed up everything. 
This is my chance to make sure I don't end up like him, that I face my responsibilities. He said she was a sex addict. So what if the baby's not yours? Well, there's a chance it might not be. But if I can be a father to this kid... But what if Kate isn't the person you think she is? I think it's wonderful what you're doing, that you want to do the best for them. You're willing to completely change your life for Kate and the baby. But is she willing to change hers? What is this? Nothing. I, I just don't want to see you get hurt, that's all. No, that's not all. What's going on? I just want to be sure you've thought this through. That you're not making some terrible mistake. <laughs> Hang on. Look, I haven't seen you in months, all right? You don't return any of my calls and you pretend that I don't exist. And the moment I get a chance to start again, you want to go and spoil it all. It's not like that. Then what is it like then, Cindy? You've got something on your chest to see it. I'm just not sure you know Kate as well as you should do. If you're going to marry her. Look, I'm not stupid, all right? I'm not under any illusions. I know what Kate is and I know what she was. But I'm not going to judge the person she is now on the fact that she slept with a load of people in her past. Including Steve. She slept with him, Phil. She slept with your brother. Next time on The Bill. If he finds out what you're doing with his wife, then... But it won't be your fingers he'll cut off. Put it down! I don't stand a chance. I'm a dead man. <laughs> <laughs>